Hey, hey they're back at it again just playing with my pens doodle button it as i call it the one i'm going to focus on specifically today is this one right here front and center so this is round two from platypus pens i did a review before on this one here this is from michael Liu at platypus pen sent me this pen to review i've really enjoyed it this actually was an honorable mention for my 2021 top five pens uh, but he sent me another version and this is the model 10 pattern four in particular is this interesting filament called terracotta so if you see those uh roofs tiles that you see on some houses or the pots for planting they look like this material, and even this material kind of has that feel to it, so it's very interesting. I've been using the pen, enjoyed it. Uh, the, a little mishap happened, and then uh, we got the fix for that. I'm going to tell you what that's about as well, but we're going to run through the pen, show you what it's all about, tell you what I like, what I don't like, and write with it and chat a little bit more. So if you haven't seen this review previously on uh, this 3D printed pen, the first one I got... I'll put one of those little link things here and a link in the description down below. Feel free to check that out to learn more about this one. But today we're talking this here, like I said, Model 10, Pattern 4. Now, I'm going to stop it right there. And, uh, you know, those are probably the names he gives the models, you know, the files for printing the pens. But from a marketing standpoint, we could use a little uh, more creativity, a little more naming. So I'm going to turn things over to a good buddy of mine from Australia, Aussie bud. Well, thanks, Doodle. Uh, he wanted a little bit of help here, getting some names together for these platypus pens here. So I thought we'd give it a bit of an Aussie twist. First pen up here, nice light mid-size pen. Figured proper name for this one. It's nice and light and nimble. Good size. Fits most hands. We're going to go with a little bungaroo. That would be my name I give this one. And now if you got a bit of a larger mitt, like your, my good friend Doodle bud, you need a proper size pen in that case. You're going to want the Chazwaza. Hey, thanks, Aussie Bud, for the name. So uh, I like those two, Bungaroo and Chazwaza. So in the comments, if you want to give your ideas for some good Aussie-sounding names for his pens, give Michael some inspiration. I actually chatted with the local barista here at the Starbucks. She's from Australia. She said the best Australian names are if you go to like a suburb on a map and start checking out some of the road names, you get some classic... Aussie names going, but back to the pen away from the naming. I figured while I have it out, let's give you a quick size comparison. So here we got a Pilot uh, Custom 823. This is the Narwhal. This is their standard sort of piston filler. This is the Peter Draws edition. So you can see there, right around the same size of those pens. Here's even like, say, a Pelican M805 uh, for reference. So a little bit larger pen in comparison to the first one I have. I can't remember the model name. Um, I'll put that in the comments below and in the link in the description there too. So, you know, a little more length on this one here and a little more thickness as well. So if you like a bit of a larger pen, this is a go-to. I'll put the weight and dimensions and all that in the description, but overall the body of the pen is about 14.2 here in the main body, about 12.2 at the top of the section, and then about 10.2 by the time you hit the end of the section with the taper. But plenty of room. Uh, it does post. We're going to talk a little bit about this material. It has some unique properties as well. But very simple and plain. It has the ballast in there as well. So you can see that it's smooth. There's no clip. But when you do set it down like with the other one, you know, obviously if you push it hard, it'll just roll away. But same thing here. You set it down, it'll find its spot because he has a little lead ballast that's put into the pen. So there's the construction. It's multi-piece. So all these parts are done on the, his 3D printer. And now I'm really interested in this because I got my first 3D printer. This is with a, a filament style. The one I got is a resin style, so a photo, photopolymer. But uh, he uses different types of filaments and uh, glues the materials together and makes them a bit of a stronger structure. So you can see it has a nice liner on the inside. Uh, we've got a little extra piece down there that will seal up against the end of the section. So that's one little change on this pen versus the first one I had. Uh, some people were mentioning they had issues with the pen drying up. I didn't really have much of an issue with mine, with my first one at all. But um, he went to make some improvements and some adjustments. So he put that in there just to help improve sealing. Uh, this one, they have the uh, Faber-Castell, I believe, or else it's just a Yovo. I think maybe Yovo makes Faber-Castell. But these are a uh, Faber-Castell nib. This other one here I got, this is in a fine, and it's like the number five size nib. 
the size five like I have on my Faber-Castell Emotion. This is the full size number six nib on the larger size pen as well. Comes with your uh, converter. Um, this is actually, a, if we zoom in here, we can get some type of focus, but this is actually a Pelican converter that's on here, made in Germany, as you can see. Fits in there quite nice. But yeah, it's really interesting because he has different materials for threads. So when you're actually printing these threads, and I am quite impressed how well they work, um, you got to really be careful with things stripping because they are softer materials. So to be quite clever, he will do a harder material on one thread and then it'll slightly softer on the other one. So the other one's going to conform. And so it sort of shapes the thread over time and gets to be a very nice smooth thread. But for being 3D printed, like these are better than a lot of, you know, pens that you get that are machined. Like, you know, we turn that off, like it's nice and tight. You turn that off. There's barely any wiggle in that, like, you know, very reasonable, better than a lot of other pens, like I said. Even the cap here, I think it turns off in right around one and a half turns, something like that. Um, but it comes off, you know, again, not very much, not very much wiggle in those threads. So they're, <laughs> they're really good threads. I'm surprised what he's able to pull off with these. We've got a cap band on there to reinforce. So this is a, a, a diamond black filament. So you can see some cool little sparkles that are in there. So really neat. And then the main filament of the body here is the terracotta. Now he gave me a few notes on the material and uh, it's a very interesting one. So it actually will kind of develop a patina over time. It will discolor a little bit from the greases and things like that in your hands, which is quite interesting. You don't expect that with a plastic type of pen. It is also a little bit more prone to stains just due to the nature of it. It's quite soft, like Sort of like uh, like how ebonite's quite different than all the other plastics. This terracotta filament is quite different as well and has a bit of a warm, fuzzy kind of feeling to it. Um, but it is a little bit more of a trade-off. It's a little more porous, so it has a little more proneness to being ink stains. You can get that off if you use like uh, soapy water typically. Maybe just water won't be enough. A little soap in your water or even a little bit of pen wash and it's come off no problem. But I thought I'd leave a little on there just so you can see. And it is a bit softer as well. So if you do post the pen, it is, it kind of scratches a little more easily. Like this pen here, I've used this quite a bit. It's tough to get a good focus on it. Just the more I affect there with the pattern, it goes all crazy, but there's no scratches on here anywhere. Like it holds up quite nice. Um, and it's a, it's quite a bit harder of a plastic, of a, of a filament versus this one just has this nice softness to it. And the trade-off on that is it does mark up a little bit. So you know, I'm not babying the pen. You can see on here if we can get, ah, uh, there we go. So you can get a few little marks on the pen. Now he did mention if you get like a hair dryer and warm it up a little bit, it tends to go away, but I just, I'm going to leave the, the battle wounds on there to show you. And then after all of that, he started remembering, you know, speaking about some proneness to ink staining and it can scratch up a little bit more, maybe form a patina. People might not like that. And you thought, why do I like this material? And then he reminded himself, he grabbed one of the pens, held it in his hand and went, oh yeah, that's why. Because it, it actually does feel quite nice. The texture on it, yeah, it's just, it has this nice kind of softness to it. It's very, very, very comfortable. So if you don't like that hard plastic feeling, but like a little more softness to it, yeah, there's just something quite tactile to it. Now, again, the trade-off, like I mentioned, is a little bit to do with the ink staining and scratches easier. So if that's not for you, he's got lots of other materials and filaments and, and patterns and sizes too. But we'll uh, do a little writing sample with it, chat a little bit more about it, and uh, wrap things up. So an Australian pen needs Australian ink. I got Robert Oster, Lake of Fire. I really like Robert Oster ink. I haven't had any challenges really with any of their inks. They seem... Uh, they perform quite well. No clogging or anything like that. They seem very friendly to all my pens I have. You know, simple little bottles, but lots of colors, almost too many colors. Here at the Vancouver Pen Shop, they carry Robert Oster. You go in, there's just a whole wall of them, and you could spend an hour trying to pick just even one bottle. But we're going to use that one in the pen here. And uh, before, actually here, before I get started, I'm going to show you the thing that happened. So this was the first section that was shipped to me and everything was hunky-dory was actually just about to shoot the review and then i took the cap off to do a writing sample and then that fell out of the cap i was like what where did that come from so i took a look at it thought it was this this material looked on the section and a piece came off so right away most people would you get angry and all this stuff but for me right away i go well 
what happened? Why did it fail? So it's it's he probably sent this per this pen to the exact person it should have gone to. He's never had this happen ever. I brought it up and let him know he felt quite embarrassed. And he's like, this has never happened. Um, but he wanted to know why as well. So I said, would you like me to give you a couple ideas? And he said, yes. So we chatted back and forth a little bit. I was looking at some of the dimensions, then some of the adhesives, some of the wall thicknesses, and gave him my two cents. And uh, he did a bunch of testing. Again, like I said, he's never had this happen before, but checked his drawings and his dimensions and all the tolerances and wall thicknesses, adhesives. And he did a battery of tests and uh, to find out, you know what, he there's probably a, a better adhesive he could have done just preparing the materials when things go together. He did revise the wall thickness and made some adjustments to the overall drawing. And uh, he was going to send me a whole new pen. And I said, you know, don't, no need to do that. The whole pen's fine. Just send me a new section. I'll keep the same nib, all that. You don't got to spend all this money. So he sent me a new section in there and I can I could see right away just the difference in the wall thickness here around the edge. So you can see this wall thickness here on this end part versus here. So he did some adjustments to that. I think it's it's significantly thicker as you can see on there as well. And just did some overall adjustments to his uh, his print file. So now I can, you know, it's a lot more sturdy. I've been using the pen, banging it around. I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Again, this is the only time this has happened on any pen. And I said, it couldn't have happened to a better person because I want to, you know, I'm interested when everything's going normal. It's not overly interesting when things fail. That's when it's really interesting and you actually get to understand a bunch of stuff. So I was happy to help him out and uh, chat a little bit more about that. But back to the pen, let's do a quick writing sample. So here we got the platypus pens. I did check the nib. It is a Yovo medium. I compared it with my uh, Gravitas entry pen that has a Yovo medium nib on it. Compared the two and these are both exactly the same as well. So this is the Model 10 Pattern 4. Now I uh, just scratched that out really quick by thought. Being this pen is made from a terracotta filament, there is a very specific writing sample I just must do. So if you are not familiar with vicinity of vicinity by system of a down, I will leave a link in the description if you care to listen, but it is a song and uh, I thought terracotta, terracotta have to do it. Overall, very happy with how the pen performs. He does adjust all these nibs before they go out the door as well. Checks for flow, checks for alignment. Uh, he mentioned this one was bang on and I have to agree it is pretty much spot on. So my closing thoughts on uh, this pen here sent to me by Michael Lou at uh, Platypus Pens. Check them out on platypuspens.com. It's the same thoughts as on this one. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Same performance works really well. This one, uh, I was looking on the site there, so I, I'm fairly certain this is a Yovo nib. You can get a Yovo or a Bach, um, but the Yovo is quite nice on here. So the pen performs just as well as this one did. They're all tuned. They write really well. It, uh, it's very well made for, you know, 3D printed. Now, again, it's not that super smooth like you would have on other pens. Obviously, this is way more expensive, but you know, your your new pens that are how they're injection molded, if they're machined, they are almost flawless, super smooth. You can see little details and stuff like that there. If we zoom in, you can see, you know, the layers there from how this thing is printed. So it's not gonna be a super pristine, super smooth, like on other pens, but the build quality is, I'm quite surprised what you can pull off with just a, uh, a 3D printer. The threads on here are fantastic. They're better than most, uh, well not most, but like quite a few pens that I get that are even machined or even injected molded sometimes. So the threads are really great. The, this one here, he mentioned to me when I get it, um, you know, the threads will probably get a little bit smoother over time and they did. These ones were smooth right out of the gate. It posts quite nicely, nice and deep. It's secure, it's very comfortable, good size. Um, again, the terracotta, is sort of a curse and a blessing at the same time. The the blessing part is it, it feels really nice in the hand. It's just the texture, the warmth, it's uh, 
Again, it's sort of like an ebonite thing where you just got to pick it up and feel it and you'll know what people are talking about. This doesn't have that, the same warmth, but the texture is there. It's it's just, yeah, it just feels like it conforms to your hand. But again, the trade-off is a little more prone to stainage and uh, getting marked up a little bit as well. But uh, yeah, it all depends what's important to you. So you may not like the terracotta. Check out the site. He's got all sorts of different materials, different patterns. This is, has the dimples on it, um, different colors as well, color combos. You can do a Bach or Yovo nib. So he's got lots of lots of options on here, and I'm pretty happy with it. He's got the ballast yet. Yeah, there's no clip on there, but instead of it just rolling away, he's got his little version of a roll stop. So it's quite nice. I think the balance is the ballast on this one is a little bit bigger. It seems to stop quicker. You know, it's a bigger pan, so you can see the difference. This takes a few more wobbles than the larger one because you can just fit a little bit more in there. But check out the description. Check out platypuspans.com. As always, you know, leave some comments. I want to engage with you. Mike will, will uh, last time on this pen, he engaged with people's questions. He'll probably do the same on this video as well. So keep an eye out down there. Thank you for watching and all the subscribes and likes. It really helps me out as well. We're going to leave it here for now. I got some new videos coming up. Going to have lots of fun. We will catch you next time.